Have you considered that the snacks you choose today might rewrite how your genes behave for years to come? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and we're examining new research showing how ultra-processed foods reshape DNA methylation, the chemical marks that help turn your genes on and off. You'll hear what changes show up in adults and children and what you can do now to protect genetic stability. I'm Alara Skye. We'll keep this direct and practical. Two recent studies track how high intake of ultra-processed foods alters methylation patterns tied to metabolism, inflammation, hormone balance, and cellular repair, often long before any lab panel or waistline changes reveal a problem. A pilot study from Brazil analyzed 30 women divided by ultra-processed intake, about 14% of daily calories in one group and 45% in the other. Blood analysis showed 80 genome regions with distinct methylation differences in the higher intake group, most showing hypomethylation, which loosens normal off signals and makes certain genes easier to activate. Participants were 26 to 36 years old with an average BMI of 24.7, and there were no significant differences in total body fat, waist size, or blood sugar between groups. The key point is that methylation shifts appeared even when standard metabolic markers still looked normal. Several gene regions stood out. Changes around repin one AS1, and FOXP1-AS1 were notable, linking ultra-processed intake to pathways for fat storage, insulin sensitivity, immune activity, and cancer progression. When methylation around repin-1 shifts, energy handling and glucose use can be affected. FOXP1 has roles in immune and brain function. Women eating fewer ultra-processed foods naturally reported higher protein and healthy fat intake, supporting methylation balance. Nutrients such as folate, vitamin B, choline, and DHA play roles in methylation pathways, and the pattern suggested that whole food eating aligns with more favorable gene regulation. The signal extends into childhood. A large analysis across European cohorts, Helix, Generation Vegetillon, ALS Pack, and Generation R, followed 3,152 children, age 5 to 11. After adjusting for age, sex, weight, parental education, and screen time, higher ultra processed intake correlated with methylation. Differences at seven CPG sites. Even though the effect sizes didn't meet the strictest thresholds for genome-wide significance, the changes were consistent and mapped to biologic systems that matter for you. Thyroid function, liver health, DNA repair capacity, and stress response signaling that touches inflammation and fat cell behavior. One of the strongest findings centered on ATF7, which was more methylated with higher ultra-processed intake. This gene is involved in stress response control and influences fat cell and inflammatory signaling. Methylation near NHEJ1, a DNA repair-related region, also increased, potentially hindering cellular damage control. Lower methylation near PHY chip was observed as well. And in other contexts during pregnancy, shifts at this site have been linked to effects on children's visual development. Together, these patterns suggest that ultra-processed foods nudge gene control in directions that strain metabolic and developmental balance. Consumption patterns matter. In one UK cohort, ultra-processed foods accounted for 57% of children's daily energy intake. In the US, estimates rise to about 66%. By contrast, Colombia and Romania showed lower shares, 19% and 15%. Yet methylation differences still appeared even at those levels. For you, the practical meaning is straightforward. Methylation changes accumulate silently, including in healthy weight individuals. Waiting for rising blood sugar, altered cholesterol, or visible fat gain means you're reacting late. The genetic handwriting begins long before those red flags emerge. If you want to break dependence on ultra-processed foods, start where decisions are made your kitchen, restock your pantry with whole foods, and remove easy-grab items like chips, cookies, and processed bars. When the default options are clean, your routine shifts without constant willpower. 
build each meal around protein and fiber to stabilize blood sugar and increase satiety. Examples in this framework include pastured eggs, grass-fed beef, or wild-caught salmon paired with vegetables, fruit, or whole grains. Consistent protein and fiber help you avoid rebound hunger and reduce the pull toward packaged snacks. Read ingredient lists carefully, long lists signal intensive processing, avoid refined sugars, and common vegetable oils such as soybean, corn, or sunflower oil. Shorter labels generally mean fewer additives and a closer match to the kind of foods that support steadier methylation patterns. Keep the flavors and textures you enjoy. Just upgrade the source. Swap sweetened yogurt for plain yogurt with fresh fruit. Move from soda to sparkling water with lemon or lime and trade chips for air-popped popcorn. You retain satisfaction without the additives and oils that travel with ultra-processed choices. Redesign your kitchen environment to make whole foods the easy choice. Place fruit at eye level, keep cut vegetables in clear containers, and move processed snacks out of immediate view. Visual cues shape daily decisions. Set them up to reinforce the behavior you want. Plan treats intentionally. Choose one meal or event each week for something special and enjoy it without guilt. Scheduled indulgence reduces impulsive eating and helps you maintain control, which aligns with long-term adherence better than strict, short-lived rules. Strengthen your support network. Share your goals with family or friends, or join a community focused on whole food eating. If you want individualized guidance, work with a registered dietitian nutritionist who can align strategies with your specific targets and help you sustain progress. Parents can apply the same structure at home. The data show that every snack or meal is a signal to your child's cells. Offer whole food options first and keep ultra-processed items rare. Small, consistent shifts build patterns that favor healthier methylation over time. Your challenge today is simple and specific. Choose one shelf or drawer, remove three ultra-processed items, and replace them with whole food options you will actually eat this week. Then, at your next meal, add a clear protein and fiber source and read the label on any packaged item before it goes on your plate. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.